when I add a temperature humidity sensor and a motion sensor for a motion activated light switch. Let's get to it. Open the switch up, pull the whole module and you pull it slowly, pull it out and you should be able to pull the whole bottom of the case off and it'll reveal the relay power supply and you can see the ESP chip but we're concerned with we're going to put we're going to solder the four pin header you can't put the four pin header on this side because it'll interfere with the face plate you won't be able to close the switch up as you can see they'll sit in here won't bother anything it's actually going to sit lower than the relay the case is the same so it'll fit all in there you'll be able to fit your jumpers um, and then we'll run a run a wire out of one of these holes so it'll be really easy to do on the inside we're gonna, what I did is took the case and a simple blade and made the slots a little bigger this one we're gonna run the wires through and this one I just opened it up so what we do is run these jumpers through this hole yours may be a little different I'm, I had one user report when I ordered the four pack of them these actual pins were swapped around mine may be different pay attention to yours you can always check with your meter just to make sure that which way the ground the hot we're gonna go green with that and normally what I do on something like this I'll take a, a picture of the wire pin outs so that way I don't have to take anything apart put the two middle pins on like that so then we'll stick our wires back through white wire and just do this slowly as you put this back together you don't want to pull your pins back out pull these in make sure we're tight Point three volts. This is the DHT22. We got positive here. That's going to be our yellow. And then the green is the ground. And we'll leave this pin for another sensor. We'll go to configuration, configure module. We're going to use GPIO03, which I believe is that blue pin. We'll go to the AM2301, which is the equivalent of the DHT22. We'll hit save. Let it reboot. There we are. There's your temperature and humidity. Should change a little bit here. I put my fingers on it. Blow on a little bit and it should jump up. There it is. You can change the versus Fahrenheit and Celsius using the set option eight here. If you go to the console and type set option eight zero or one if you were the other way and you can toggle that back and forth and see we're on Celsius now and that's all there is to it you can see in the console there's this telemetry message here you, using the sensor name AM2301 and there's a JSON set of temperature and the humidity and showing the temperature unit and we're going to bring that into Home Assistant as a sensor to add it to Home Assistant you'll need to add it in your configuration YAML under the sensor section You'll add it as platform MQTT. State topic is, maybe we were talking about the telemetry sensor topic. That's where that comes from. And the sensor name, which is the AM2301, which again comes from this section right here. And then the temperature of the AM2301 right here. Then we use unit of measurement. We use Fahrenheit. Again, I'll use the last will and testament. So it'll show an available. If it's not, the unit is offline. To add a humidity, I copied the same one, except I did change the unit of measurement to percentage, and they put the device class of humidity, which will change the icon automatically. And then I use the humidity section. You'll get the temperature and the humidity. Now, one thing to note is the default setting on Tasmoda 
is you go to main menu, go to configuration. The telemetry is on, is set as default for 300 seconds. You can set that down to I believe as low as 60, and that'll make it report every minute. And the console it'll send over every minute the telemetry. So if you do restart and you get it blank, just wait that one minute and it'll populate. This is a small passive infrared motion sensor referred to as PIRs. This one's the AM312. It's a very cool little PIR. It's very small. The only downside to it, there's no settings to it. So it's kind of locked in with the sensitivity and how long it triggers, etc. It has some anti-interference circuitry in it to help out with any type of interference that you may have seen with some other ones. We'll also be putting this in the same faceplate. The only issue is you need the hot ground and then your data out. The only issue is we don't, we don't have enough wires. What I normally do for something like this, a real simple, is I'll take a piece of proto board and I may not do these 90 degrees. This is what I had available already made. I may do straight headers and you can just jump them together. You can see these are bridged on the back and what we'll do is I'll just attach those because I need to split the ground and split the hot to one side and then we'll attach the hot to the other side like so. So that will give us additional jumper wires for the hot I'll connect and the ground on this side. So we have one split and just to make things simple I'll use the same red and brown. We'll do a red for hot and we'll do the brown for ground. So there we go. We got our hot and our grounds. So what we'll do is hook things back up to the DHT22 and always check your pinouts because some parts may differ at times so definitely they may look the same but you may have different variants so always check the pinouts versus what I may have. The red is going to go on the left and the purple data line goes in the middle and the ground goes in here. But we need, now we need to do the passive infrared, the PIR. So we'll go to configuration, configure module, and under serial out GPIO1, we're going to do switch one in, and the in means no pull up. We don't need a pull up resistor turned on for the passive infrared. And then we'll save it. Because remember, the button actually on this default configuration, it's actually the button of that actually turns the light on and off is actually under button one. So we'll be available to use switch one. It will start toggling the relay as soon as we save it. But it's when we go to put in the rule in the switch mode, it will stop that toggling back and forth. So we'll go to the console. What we'll want to do is we need to set to switch mode one, one. And the reason we're doing that is switch mode one Switch mode zero, which is the default, is just a toggle. But that's not what a motion sensor is going to trigger. And then when it goes quiet, it goes back, much like a regular on off switch. So switch mode one, one, and you'll get the response back. You do a rule. And just to make things easier, do rule one on switch one state, do publish. We want to send an MQTT message to KLD, the topic of KLD switch slash PIR, and you can make this whatever you want. State, we'll send the value of whatever the switch is, and we'll end the rule, but the end on. And we won't do another one. We'll set that rule. You'll see the rules off right now. Well, let's do rule one, one, and turn it on. We'll put our hand in front. And it published the one and it published a zero. Simple as that. The switch still works to toggle the actual light. We do one other additional thing, which is say we want to put this in a hallway where you're wanting to do motion on the light for just when someone walks by. And you're not having to set up any automations or anything. You're letting the switch do all the, the smarts. So what we'll do, we're gonna go back to the console and I'm gonna paste this one in, but I will explain it here. So rule two is on switch state equals one, and that's gonna do a backlog of commands. It's gonna turn the power relay on. It's gonna set a rule timer one of 30 seconds. Then on the rules timer one, when it's finished, it'll do power off. And then we'll turn rule two on. You'll see 
it turns the actual light on, the light switch on, and you'll notice there's a result that T1 30 is showing that's a timer of 30 seconds. And after 30 seconds, it will turn the light off. Now, if, if you trigger it again within 30 seconds, it's gonna reset that back to 30 seconds. So as long as there's motion continuing, the light will stay on as long as someone triggers it with motion again within the 30 seconds. If not, you'll see it turn itself right back off. So it's a real easy way if you're like, say, doing something with some stairs, coming down to a basement or going upstairs into a hallway, and you always want that light to trigger, you can set up a simple little rule on the switch. One other thing we can do is to see the PIR sensor. We're going to go in Home Assistant and set that up, and I've already done that. In your configuration YAML, under your binary sensor section, we're going to utilize that topic that we use, that KLD switch PIR state, which if you've changed that in a rule, you'll need to change that. I'll utilize the switch's normal LWT, the last wheel and testament. That way I'll see it goes on or off. And remember, the payload 1 is on and 0 is off. And we can see that very easily looking in the console. You saw when we trigger it, the state equals 1 and state equals 0. So once you save that, you'll see that now we have the, the K-LED motion and it's clear. And since we do have that rule, you actually see the light turn on. It shows motions detected, the light turned on. You'll see actually the motion goes clear and that's that AM312 goes clear pretty quickly. And that's all there is to setting that into Home Assistant and doing the rules. Now that we have all this working on the table, it's time to actually mount it. What we're gonna do, we'll actually will mount the switch in a two gang with a blank panel in here we're going to tape off and cut a hole for the temperature sensor and the PIR so those the PIR will be in here and so will the temperature sensor tape off the switch plate get our center test things for fit cut them I'll test the sensor size fits great a little bigger we can fix all that a little hot glue make sure it stays this will be on the inside so it doesn't have to be real pretty glue in the PIR line it up looks good put it in the plate Next to the other switch, I think we got a winner. So this is what I'm going to mount mine in, the dual gang box. Except one thing I do need, there is, because it's high voltage and it'd be doing low voltage, they sell a partition, and you can see the exact problem right here, I want to point that out, how these bundle of wires came across the other side. I want to keep those on the other side so you can have a split high voltage and then low voltage. Got it all mounted up in the box. Got a temperature humidity. Got the PIR motion sensor. Got the switch. Be sure and subscribe and get notifications on the next video. Thanks for watching.